Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give before the subcommittee is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Please be seated. Our first witness is Dr. Peter McCulloch. Dr. McCulloch is an internist, cardiologist, and epidemiologist from Dallas, Texas. He is broadly published with over 700 citations in the National Library of Medicine. He has testified multiple times in the U.S. Senate, U.S. House of Representatives, European Parliament, and many state capitals concerning public health policy. Dr. McCulloch. Chairman Johnson, Ranking Member Blumenthal, Subcommittee Members, it's an honor to present my insights, my analysis, my clinical experience on the, this very important topic. <clears throat> the first time I testified at Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs, before a word came out of my mouth, Minority Center, Senator Gary Peters said, what America was about to hear was misinformation. I didn't even know what he was talking about. I had never heard that term before in academic medicine or in uh, important deliberations. That's November 19th, 2020. What was he doing? He was using an old communist propaganda technique. He was attempting to gain leverage over me before a word ever came out of my mouth. We should never have our public servants ever try to gain leverage over anyone who is coming to Washington to help the nation on an important issue. As introduced, I'm an internist, I'm a cardiologist. I believe I'm the most published individual who's ever testified on matters related to COVID-19 in any of these hearings. I've seen and examined more patients. I've examined more data. And I'm one of the most published people on the topic in the world. And as a cardiologist, I can tell you, my role in this was to fight disease, preserve life, and above all, do no harm. Do no harm. Now, the topic today is myocarditis or heart damage from the COVID-19 vaccines. I'm a cardiologist. I know the topic well. I've examined thousands of patients with this problem, thousands. Before the pandemic, I had two patients ever with this problem. There's 1,065 papers in the peer-reviewed literature on COVID vaccine myocarditis. So let me summarize them for you. The first one that came on my radar screen that was alarming came from Washington University in St. Louis, August 18th of 2021. The first author is Verma and colleagues, New England Journal of Medicine. 42-year-old man comes into Washington University Hospital with vaccine myocarditis. The infection's ruled out, it's the vaccine. He's in the hospital. This is one of our best hospitals in the United States. He dies three days after taking Moderna. They can't save him in the hospital. Say, so Dr. McCullough, move the microphone just a little bit the, away from you. Then, kinda. then one was reported from Korea by Choi and colleagues. This is now a younger man. Just a few days after Pfizer, he comes in the hospital. He dies within eight hours of being in the hospital. I can tell you, I'm a cardiologist. That doesn't even happen with heart attacks. He dies within eight hours. I examined all of the slides and the, the images that the Koreans had showed us. It looked like somebody took a blowtorch to that heart. It was so completely fried with inflammation. His heart was destroyed. These cases, which were widely known at the time, should have gotten everyone's attention. Everyone should have been laser focused on this. We should never have someone die after taking a vaccine. That's directly caused to the vaccine. Then Gill and colleagues, Connecticut, published in Archives of Pathology. Two boys, age 16 and 17, who die a few days after taking Pfizer. These are teenagers. They're found dead at home by their parents. They're absolutely horrified. They request an autopsy. They call in University of Michigan and University of Minnesota to look over what are they finding at autopsy. Conclusion, it's Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine myocarditis, unequivocal. These are autopsy confirmed cases. So for all the mothers in the room, how would they feel if they found their 
children dead after taking a COVID-19 vaccine. This is in the peer-reviewed literature. This is not misinformation. Everyone should be paying attention to this. This is not conjecture. This is in the peer-reviewed literature. So we started to ask ourselves, what is going on? Turns out that Pfizer and Moderna in Janssen are the genetic code for the spike protein. The spike protein is the damaging part of the virus. The spike protein is loaded into the body and it causes tremendous damage, tremendous damage in some. Acute myocarditis appears to have some genetic predilection and all of the vials of the vaccine are not the same. But I can tell you, I'm concerned that until the vaccines are stopped, there will be cases of acute myocarditis. And to finish, we've had 216 vaccine deaths this year alone. So if the vaccine campaign continues, we have to look at what are we getting out of it now, four and a half years of the campaign, and how many more people will die. I'm Dr. Peter McCullough. Thank you for listening. Dr. McCullough, pl please, I, I, in my layman's terms, I just kind of laid out the, the harmful ne mechanisms of this injection. Can, can you and Dr. Vaughn, because I think you've both spoken to this, again, in layman's terms, talk about why this caused so much harm in so many different ways because of the biodistribution. Dr. McCulloch. 80% of Americans took a vaccine. 20% didn't. 20% did not take a vaccine. The vaccine was never safe enough for me to take. Messenger RNA devised by Pfizer and Moderna has been chemically modified to be unassailable to enzymes in the body to be broken down. The messenger RNA is found in the human heart of people who die after the vaccine. It's found in the brain. The spike protein is found everywhere in the body. Three studies now show the spike protein is circulating in the blood for six to nine months after people take the shot. This part of the virus, the lethal part of the virus in the vaccinated, it's circulating in the blood. And then they take a booster, they get more circulating in the blood. It is a killer protein. It cannot be safe. It was not safe by design. Safety trumps efficacy. We cannot tolerate false drug claims. And we saw a poster behind Senator Blumenthal making a false drug claim that vaccines saved millions of lives, specifically the COVID vaccine. Well, let's take a look at that. When someone signs consent for a vaccine, Senator Blumenthal, does the consent form say it's gonna save their lives? Of course it doesn't. It's not on the FAQ. There's never been a prospective, randomized, double-blind placebo-controlled trial ever showing that COVID-19 vaccines reduce mortality or hospitalization. There's not even a valid non-randomized study. Thankfully, COVID mortality went down for three reasons. Because we all got the infection, vaccinated and unvaccinated, so we developed population natural immunity. We developed early treatment. Credit to Operation Warp Speed. We used all the Operation Warp Speed tools, additional drugs, we treated patients with multi-drug protocols at home so they don't go to the ER. So Governor Green never saw the patients we treated because they were successfully treated at home. And the third reason is the virus mutated to a much milder form. Those things happen concurrently with rollout of the vaccine. The vaccine cannot be falsely credited with saving millions of lives. We can't allow false drug advertising to be put up on a poster behind one of our public servants. We cannot accept that. So let me quick... And I will, have a lot more, I will have a lot more questions. So the point I want to make is I, I think an awful lot of folks are, are saying that there was not informed consent. I would argue they violated the invaluable principle of informed consent with this COVID injection. I, I just think that's indisputable. I'll start with you, Dr. McCulloch. Do you want to weigh in on that? I've presented at the FDA advisory meetings. I've advised companies for decades on this, so I know the regulatory science very well. When a product definitely results in death, and there are thousands of peer-reviewed papers on this, Governor, the COVID vaccines 
in some people, sadly, result in death. Some on the very first day they take the shot. That must be a black box warning on the product immediately. I just checked the package inserts for the currently available products, the ones that uh, Senator Blumenthal wants to pursue. Sounds like governor wants to still pursue these. Our FDA still wants them to be administered. They still don't have the word death in the package insert. As of today, they don't. And so Americans are not fairly informed. Do you have any doubt in your mind that the COVID injection caused some deaths? I mean, do you, do you, what, what, what do you think of the, what is it, 37, 38,607 right now listed on VAERS? What, what do you think the real number is? And do you have any science to back up your, your opinion? The best data are autopsies. So in the largest autopsy series published to date, I know because I'm the senior author, of all the death we, deaths we examined, and we, we re-reviewed them, we had an adjudication committee, we had ways of arbitration, deciding on did the vaccine cause death. The answer is, of these cases that came in for autopsy after vaccination, 73.9% of individuals, it was determined that the vaccine was the cause of death. First author is Holscher and colleagues, he's sitting right behind me. And, and again, by FDA's own laws, that should be included on that package insert, correct? Immediately in 2021, Dr. Carol Tassetta, working with the Daily Cloud, wrote Peter's marks in the summer of 2023 and said, where's the black box warning? Where is it? No word from marks. But my guess is the reason they were so concerned about issuing a warning on the Han is again, they, they, didn't want to, they didn't want any vaccine hesitancy on this, right? And also, if they alerted doctors to the fact that if you have a patient with myocarditis, you might, you might want to ask them, did you just get a vaccine recently? And otherwise, the doctor is looking at myocarditis trying to figure out how to treat it, right? Not, not trying to figure out the cause, because myocarditis does happen. You know, Dr. McCullough, quickly. Quickly, to to myocarditis was so common that in the UK and Australia, they actually did issue guidelines to doctors on how to recognize it and when to get MRIs. That's how big a problem vaccine myocarditis is. Also, one of the points I made is they, they, would, they did not warn, or they didn't advise doctors to ad advise against strenuous physical activity, right? They pulled that off of the, the, one, the one warning that they gave. I mean, to talk know, about how dangerous that is. That well, is also, a, I mean, the mild. To talk about how often myocarditis is mild versus serious. Before the pandemic, there was myocarditis. It can be caused by Cac Coxsackie virus. The most dangerous type is called giant cell myocarditis. It was very rare. I had seen two cases in my career. One was fatal. But it's in our guidelines. Anyone who develops myocarditis cannot undergo strenuous physical activity. They have to be taken out of sports. It's mandatory because the surge of adrenaline, when there's inflammation in the heart, triggers a cardiac arrest. So you can imagine how reckless it was for the, the uh, sports teams to mandate vaccines on athletes, provide no uh, uh, provision of safety, and then have them go out on the field. So why would these federal health officials, when they're discussing putting that warning, that advisory for physicians as, it, as they you know, did their kind of weak need warning on myocarditis, what does that tell you? What, what, why would they pull that out? It was reckless not to provide prudent guidance on reducing the risk of cardiac arrest when a patient has vaccine myocarditis. Whether it's acute myocarditis, we clinically recognize, by the way, 90% are young men, 90% are hospitalized, Tracy Hogue and others at UCSD show that, multiple studies, but there's a larger group of subclinical myocarditis. These are patients with heart palpitations, blood pressure swings, atypical chest pain, Listen, this is water under the bridge. Fortunately, very few people are taking COVID shots anymore. But these patients still have symptoms. A recent report by Kyosmu in Journal of the American College of Cardiology has shown cardiac arrest in people years after the vaccines, and they have found vaccine microscars in the heart. Okay, I, I think we've probably gone about as far as we're going to go today. What I am going to do is give each one of you, and we'll, we'll end with the governor. You can have the last word. Well, I'll probably have the last word. Um, but give you each, and I really respect it, not much more than a minute. If there's just something non-itchy, point you want to make, can, can you make it in, in a minute? 
And we'll start with you, Dr. McCullough. You've asked for us to cite evidence. Three papers by Nathaniel Mead, who's in the audience today, a former uh, National Institutes of Health uh, uh, writer, three of them that contain nearly a thousand references, so they're all there in these papers, have concluded that the risks of COVID-19 vaccination far outweigh any theoretical benefits. We've heard countless wishful thoughts from Senator Blumenthal and from Governor Green, Dr. Green, but they're wishful. They wish the vaccines would have saved lives. They wish the vaccines would reduce severity. I can tell you because you know this, I was one of the few doctors who was on the real front lines of treating acutely sick patients at home. That's how we reduced risk of death, not via a vaccine. The marathon runner, he passed away because he didn't receive effective early multi-drug treatment. It didn't matter whether he took a vaccine or not. Our CDC knew about thousands of patients fully vaccinated early in 2021 dying of acute COVID-19. It was abundantly obvious the COVID-19 vaccines did not reduce the risk of death. I don't want America to be fooled by, by this hearing today thinking that the vaccines save lives because they didn't. Dr. Vaughn, please, audience, audience, please. 